Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com So, today's video is a little bit different to normal ones. Basically, this article has done the rounds over the last day or so of most of the UK media outlets. It's about cassettes having their biggest sales since 2003 and all oh, the cassettes are on the rise and basically everyone's sort of cottoned onto it. I think they come from one central news agency and everyone just runs with it. But regardless, yesterday morning I started getting inundated by calls from BBC radio stations here in the UK asking if I wanted to go on air and speak to the presenters who were going to ask questions about this comeback. So actually I said yeah why not. So I did quite a few yesterday. In fact the first clip I'm going to show you is well it's not radio and I wasn't expecting that and I'm just glad that I bothered washing my hair that morning and wasn't sitting there in my dressing gown. But anyway, regardless, I've put them all together, see, you know, what you guys think, and basically just, because I am that much of a narcissist, thought that you guys might like to hear what was said on air, what questions were asked. Only thing to note is that all of these interviews were not scripted. I literally went from one to another. I did like eight interviews in an hour at one point. Um, so I didn't know exactly what they were going to say, so I didn't have a script for each question they were going to ask because I didn't know what the questions were going to be, but I had a rough idea and uh, I hope I answered them satisfactorily. But regardless, here's all the interviews put together, combined, and uh, if you're feeling bored enough, give it a watch. And yeah, don't worry, I'll get some proper videos done again soon, it's just life's a bit hectic at the moment. All right. Thanks a lot for watching and as always, happy taping. Bye bye. Do you think you have what it takes, Hope? Absolutely not. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> we'll stay here. Yes, <laughs> on the nice warm summer. <laughs> <laughs> now, Netflix has announced it's abandoning DVD rentals. The company is now known as a streaming service, but it started out sending movies through the mail. But don't worry, DVDs may be going away, but cassette tapes are back. Yes, sales are now at their highest since 2003 with artists like Arctic Monkeys, Harry Styles and Florence and the Machine all releasing their music on the medium. Let's speak to cassette enthusiast Tony Villa. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, when did you become a cassette enthusiast? I have to know. Well, you know, being born when I was, um, cassettes were how I absorbed most of my music when I was young, through the 80s and through the 90s. And then, like most people, when everything became digital, I looked at my cassettes and went, oh, I'm never going to need them again, and threw them all away. <laughs> and then, a few years later, at a car boot sale, I saw a cassette deck there for a few pounds, and I thought, ah, cassettes, I remember them so well. And I bought it, I cleaned it up, started playing the cassette, and... A bit of my mind that had been closed for a long time suddenly opened in a wash of nostalgia and I've been back to cassettes ever since. So that's why you have been or have become a cassette enthusiast. Why do you think other people are turning back to cassettes? Well, for the younger generation, I believe, you know, right now if we listen to a lot of popular chart music, it has a lot of 80s influence. You look at the TV shows, Stranger Things, you look at the films, Guardian of the Galaxies, they have cassettes in them. You look at phone cases, handbags, T-shirts, they've got cassettes on them. They're an icon of what is currently a very trendy decade. And the fact that now people are getting a bit bored of streaming because we've had it for so long and they miss the tangibility of something to hold, something to look at, something to read liner notes on, and they see their favourite artists or independent artists releasing cassettes. It's like... Wow, that's so cool. A cassette. I haven't got one of these. <laughs> oh, it looked good on my shelf or on my desk at work. So people are buying them as, you know, more than just a little audio item, as trinkets, as little souvenirs. So we heard, of course, that Netflix is ditching DVDs. So if you were going to fight the case for cassettes, why do they deserve a revival, maybe over DVDs, for example? Well, this is the thing, and <laughs> human nature is what is new and whiz bang and shiny becomes ordinary, becomes boring. We want something else. It's like, you know, I speak to my children. My children also know about cassettes and they say, hang on, so this needs no internet connection. I don't have to pay a monthly service for it. Mm. And it doesn't rely on computers and everything. I can just put this in and play music. What is this witchcraft? <laughs> I mean, you know, DVDs, again, 
it's great, yeah, they're ditching the DVDs, but if I want to watch something which isn't on a streaming platform, but I've got it on DVD, I can watch it as many times as I like, and it costs me nothing per month, where if your entire music and your entire film collection is based around a streaming platform, it doesn't matter how long you've paid, as soon as you stop paying, it's gone. Well, Tony, just before we let you go, you've got to tell us, what is the best cassette you own then? Who's on it? The best cassette, you see, I've, I've got this one here. It's, uh, it's called Misc Dance, and it's a cassette <laughs> that I remember playing in my car when I was young, and I had black hair, and life was free, and the songs <laughs> on there just take me back to that part of time, basically, oh, when life it. was different and everything was exciting. If we had more time, we'd get the full, the full playlist on that, but we haven't <laughs> got time for it. But thank you so much, Tony, for giving us your time this evening, Tony Villa there, cassette enthusiast. Here's something I bet you never thought we'd make a comeback, ever. The cassette tape. Sales of cassette tapes are now at their highest level since 2003, with big artists like Harry Styles and Florence and the Machine even putting out their latest music on tape. Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel that is dedicated to cassettes. Tony, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Roberto. Tony, welcome to the programme. What can people see you do on your YouTube channel? Well, you see, cassettes have a bad rap. You know, when people think of cassettes, they think, oh, I need to put a bick in it to wind it, and it got chewed up in the car, and it was all hissy. My channel is about if you take your time and know how to record them properly and put your equipment right, cassettes can sound spectacularly good. Um, all right. How many cassettes do you have, Tony? Personally, several thousand. Um, my it. wife is still with me, however. You know. <laughs> <laughs> in, in its heyday, I'd ha I used to try and I used to change cassette decks. Spent a lot of money trying to get the perfect sound to record the mixtape to put it in the car. It's so much easier today, Tony. Why go back to the cassette? Um, nostalgia, from a personal point of view. You know, I, I was born in the seventies. In the 80s, cassette was my format, the music I grew up with and loved, the mixtapes I used to make for people, recording the charts. And one day, I just stumbled across an old cassette deck of the car boot sale and went, oh, I wonder if they're still as bad as I remember. I got it, I cleaned it up, and it's like a little part of my head, which has been closed for a long time, suddenly opened. And it's like, I remember these days, and this is a nice feeling. This, this, this means something. So funny enough, I didn't realise this was coming up today. On Monday, I was popped down to my mum's house, and in my old room, I've got four of those uh, that mini suitcases, cassette cases, and I, 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 know, I haven't looked at these things, things for years, and I, like, I opened them all up, and there's all these mixed cassettes, and I'm thinking, do I throw them away? Do I keep them? What do you think? It depends. If, if they were personal to you, if they were stuff that you put together yourself, yes. before, just, you know, recording an album, then... You can get little devices now. You can put the cassette in, put a USB key in the other t in the other side, play it, it'll record it onto a USB key, and you can listen to it on whatever you want. You know, the, it depends how nostalgic you are, or whether you like to revel in nostalgia, or whether you're just focused and keeping moving forward. I mean, so for, for you, I mean, the, the nostalgia is an important part of all our lives. Of course, it is. But is 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 the faff of cassettes part of the magic for you? Look, Roberto, nothing in life is easy. I mean, look at the rise of vinyl. I mean, you know, we go onto Spotify, there's the artist, click, the music is playing, vinyl, buy the vinyl, open it, look at the lovely artwork, get it out, clean it, put it on your deck, get, make sure you, sat, you know, that there's a procedure to it. And after you've done all of that faff and you listen to it, it's more rewarding. And you're likely to listen to the entire album instead of listening to 10 seconds of something new and go, nope, next. I will check out your YouTube channel. I just said it before we had CDs years ago, I lent a cassette of mine, a, su a Super Tramp, to a friend of mine in his BMW for five series. And one night they stole his BMW, but they chucked out the cassette. The su the, where the car was, the Super Tramp cassette had been left on the floor, which was very <laughs> hurtful. Very hurtful. So those were the days when you'd be driving down the motorway and you'd see cassettes strewn everywhere, all tape in the bushes and everything, didn't you? <laughs> Tony, wish you well, my friend. Look after yourself. Tony Villa, who runs a YouTube channel that is dedicated to cassette. Now, do you still own cassette tapes? <laughs> According
According to new research, cassette sales have reached their highest level for 20 years. The total number of sales have risen from less than 4,000 in 2012 to almost 200,000 in 2022. Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel dedicated to cassettes. He also runs cassettecomeback.com. Morning, Tony. Good morning, James. Why do you love cassettes so much? Personally, it's nostalgia. You know, growing up when I did through the 80s and 90s, cassettes were always there, whether it was making mixtapes for friends or, or girls to try and impress them, whether it was listening to them in my first car. They're just uh, an intrinsic part of my youth that, uh, as I grow older, is something I still love and enjoy using. Do you like the sound quality of them? Because I know when there was a big vinyl revival about 10 years ago, a lot of musical purists said, oh, yeah, but everything sounds better on vinyl. Where do you stand on the sound quality of cassettes? Well, you've got to think that they're analogue media and they have imperfections. But like with people, imperfections are what create character. You know, if you grew up with them, the characteristic hiss was something that you always associated with tape, and it's it's always on the back of your mind. But as with anything, even today, you can plug your, you know, Spotify into a grand, massive hi-fi, and it sounds amazing. Or if you listen to it through the 399 Bluetooth speaker you bought on the internet, it's not going to sound as good. So as with cassettes, the more you spent, the better the equipment you got, you can make them sound extraordinary. What is what is your cassette player, Tony? Because I had a message earlier from Eddie in Wooden Under Edge saying he's still got his 1985 Binatone Tower Stacker system. Do you remember those? Binatone, yeah. Binatone, so, that's know, it, yeah. With Amstrad and stuff, yeah. It, again, it's all what you spend. I mean, that's the beauty of it for me because I, I did come back to them and I've managed to buy cassette decks now that were just never going to be purchasable when I was young. But now, like, one of the decks that I love is called a Nakamichi Dragon. And that thing was thousands of pounds in the early 80s. You know what I mean? But Yeah. So I suppose this brings us on to to the unlikely revival of the cassettes. What do you make of this, Tony? Well, to be honest, like you've already mentioned, you know, there's been a big vinyl revival because ultimately, as people, we like things. I mean, a digital sound excites one sense, you you know, your sense of hearing. But physical media also excites a sense of sight. You know, you can look at the brilliant inlays, you can look at the mad-coloured cassettes, you can have great gatefolds on vinyl, and also the sense of touch. You have something you can touch, you can feel and something that you can really feel like you own it and you can display it. And young people who have grown up on streaming never really had this before. You know, they had an iPod and then they went on to streaming maybe. But now they're seeing cassettes, which are parts of things like Stranger Things, which is part of this all the 80s is cool revival we're going through. They're seeing cassettes on T-shirts, phone cases. And now they're seeing their favourite artists or favourite independent artists releasing cassettes for a few quid and they're like, oh, I can actually own this. It's cool, even if I might never actually play the music on it. Yeah, some of the biggest artists of the moment now releasing stuff on cassettes, Harry Styles, Arctic Monkeys, Florence and the Machine. If you had to keep only one cassette that you own, Tony, do you have a most prized cassette tape? I certainly do, and it's one that I didn't throw away first time round because I binned a lot of mine in the early noughties, like a lot of people did. But it's not actually music tape because back in the day as well, we used to load our computer games from cassettes, and this is the original cassette of Ghostbusters, the game, for the <laughs> Commodore 64, which I got with my Commodore 64, my first computer, back in 1984. So I still have that. When it came to throwing them away, I kept that one for sentimental reasons, and that would be the cassette that I, I kept from a fire. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, just finally, tell us about your YouTube channel. Well, like you were saying, my YouTube channel is all about exploring all the different varieties of cassette. You can get, you know, your TDK, Max, L, Sony, blah, blah, blah. But showing people now that if you take the time, learn how to do it, what all the buttons are for, and use a good deck, you can make cassettes sound amazing. Tony, really appreciate your time this morning. Great to chat. Thank you so much. Tony Villa, who runs a YouTube channel dedicated to cassettes. We're finding out about cassettes which are returning 
with sales soaring, apparently. Yeah. Well, let's speak to Tony Villar, who runs a YouTube channel that is dedicated to cassettes. Tony, afternoon. What's going on here? Why are tapes returning? Good afternoon, gents. Well, I think tapes returning because the humble audio cassette has transcended being just something to play music on. You know, we've got a new generation of youngsters who are watching stuff like Strange Things and Guardians of the Galaxy where cassettes are in there. You know, they're sending Kate Bush to the top of the charts. And as they're learning more independent artists and liking them, they're finding their favorite independent artists and the big ones are selling cassettes. And this is a an iconic thing which you can find on many a T-shirt, many a phone case. And they're thinking, wow, this is something I can buy for a few pounds. That helps the independent artists I love and I get something nice back that maybe has a mad coloured cassette and an inlay and they've signed it. And it's a few quid and it's a nice thing to have on my shelf to show that I support them. Well, it is. And it is something about it being physical as well, isn't it? And I think it, it's quite nice to see, you know, teenagers and the like looking through records and now cassettes. And do you think there is an, an appetite then? Because obviously they can get music on demand streaming whenever they want quite easily. Is there something about holding it in your hand? Absolutely. I mean, you have to think we are hunter gatherers we you know we we like collecting things if you went back 30 years to an average house pride of place would be the hi-fi and the cds there and the records there and then now it's all gone and we've got a bluetooth speaker in the corner or something and as humans we, we we do like to collect nice things and especially in the case of a lot of cassettes from independent artists they're very personalized and they feel a bit special OK, they may feel special, Tony, but they're not very good, are they? You have to rewind them with your pencil. I mean, I can see why people like vinyl. Yes, I like vinyl, but cassettes, you end up throwing them out the window, or you used to. Well, that's the point. You see, um, what is new and whiz-bang and shiny like streaming, after a while becomes ordinary, then it becomes boring, and then we look for something else. And at this moment in time, since they never actually created anything other new, then people are, are going back to cassettes. It's sort of a trickle down from records, which are becoming more and more expensive. OK, thank you very much, Tony Villa, who runs a YouTube channel that's dedicated to cassettes. Is that a cassette player? I've heard about those. <laughs> Do you remember the faff, you know, your tape player chewing up your favourite tunes? You have to get a pencil, take the cassette here, get a pencil and to put it back how it was. There is something quite magical about these in a world where everything's digital. A bit like how vinyl seen a revival. The cassette is as well. Sales are now at their highest since 2003, with massive artists like Harry Styles and Florence and the Machine even putting out their latest music on one of these, on a tape. Well, Teddy Villa runs a YouTube channel that's dedicated to... The cassettes and he's with us this afternoon. Afternoon to you, Tony. Afternoon, Steve. Uh, I'll tell you something, you know, Tony. I am astonished here at what I've got in front of me. Uh, this is a, a wonderful antique. I remember going out and about with these sort of things, and I've got a posh one. It, as I mentioned, it's got rewind and fast forward, and um, they mm -hmm. don't know they're born these days if, if you've not got that. Uh, but how on <laughs> earth? How on earth has this come back into fashion? It's like everything, Steve. You know, um, what is new and whiz bang and shiny, i.e., streaming when it came out. As it goes on, it becomes ordinary, it becomes boring, and people look for something new. It's human nature. We've had this big revival of records over the past few years, and now it's trickling down to the humble cassette. And we've got two sorts of people. We've got people like myself, old fogies that remember them first time round, they get all nostalgic and dewy-eyed. And then we've got a new generation of young people that see them on T-shirts and phone cases and in Stranger Things, and all of a sudden see them on a shelf and think, Oh, they're real. This is interesting. <laughs> but you see, I'm I'm forty this year in in a, in a few months' time, so I'm not hugely old fogey, but I'm not young, young, hip and trendy. And to me, this is this is you know this brings back so many wonderful memories, and I can play it, and no problem at all. And it still sounds great. I plugged this in earlier on with this cassette, and it sounded great, like vinyl does to somebody who listens listens on vinyl. It just sounds better. But we had to rummage around to find this in our building, and we're in a radio station. So who on earth's got this kit? Well, you see, that's the thing. Um, if you go onto the usual places that you look for old stuff, there's plenty of it up there, but it is rising and rising in price. Um, a lot of the duplication plants that make it are using old tape, which is maybe 30 years old, and there is some new tape being made, but it's not as good as the, as the stuff from the heyday. 
But the people never went away. A lot of it, like the vinyl revival, has been fueled by independent artists looking for a way to sell something fast and cheap. And since the majors have now filled up all the vinyl plants, they're now going to the cassette plants to make little things to sell to their fans so that they can show appreciation. Because mm, digital is obviously quicker and more convenient. We, we get that. But this, this is just a bit of a, a, a nostalgia fest, a bit of something retro rather than anything for sound quality. It, it's not just that. It's, it's we humans, we, we're hunter-gatherers. We like nice things. You know, in, in the past, we used to have the hi-fi pride of place and we used to have the CDs there, the records, and it's all gone. It's been replaced by a small little black box and people have got bored of that and thought, oh, this is real, this is tangible. I can look at the liner notes. Oh, look, the artist signed it. It's transcended just being an audio format into something of a keepsake, if you will. So where's this going then, Tony? How big is this going to get? I don't know. I think, it, I mean, if you look at the figures, you know, 195,000 last year, but let's be honest, CD still sold 11.6 million. So it's a very, very niche product. I personally believe it's trendy right now, but it, it could be a bit of a flash in the pan because there are no new high quality cassette decks being made and haven't been for decades. And there's no new high quality tape being made and it hasn't been for decades. No. And I, so I won't be changing my car radio just yet then. No, just, just, just for the time being, save yourself the hassle. I'll bet you go through pencils like nobody's business in your house. Rejigging re, re tape. Not the, it's, it's not the pencil, it's the big pen. That's the one that did it properly. <laughs> the big, yes, the big felt tip. That, that really sorts it out, doesn't it? That was it. That's it. Tony, it's good to talk to you. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel that's dedicated to cassettes. These things here are making a comeback. Would you believe it? I, I cannot believe it. BBC Hereford and Worcester. So cassette tapes we've talked of today. Sales now at their highest since 2003. Harry Styles, Florence and the Machine are putting out their latest music on tape. Uh, Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel dedicated to cassettes. Also runs CassetteComeback.com. Hi, Tony. Good afternoon, Andrew. What's with the comeback, do you think? Um, it's, there's a number of reasons, but I think most of it is sort of a trickle down from the revival of vinyl that we've seen over the last few years. Um, insofar as we've got a lot of people that are young and they've never really embraced uh, physical formats and the tangibility of them because they've been brought up on digital and streaming. Then they're seeing things like Stranger Things and Guardians of the Galaxy putting cassettes there. And then they're seeing artists releasing stuff on cassette and they're going, Oh, that's nice, uh, especially if they're independent artists. They sometimes sign them and put little liner notes in and think, I can support an artist I love, and I can also get something really cool that's iconic and retro, and even if I don't play it, it'll look good on my shelf. I've still got one or two sealed blank cassettes somewhere. They look like, according to your website, they're worth a few quid. Um, if I had, you know, you know, they say if I knew then what I knew now, I'd have been filling storage units with blank cassettes twenty years ago when you couldn't give them away. Amazing! I really would. Absolutely amazing! Yeah. Um, gosh, yeah, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm looking at cassette comeback and taking a trip down memory lane, wondering as well if if music ever really sounded good on on cassette. Are we looking at this through a a large set of rose tinted uh, cassette? shaped spectacles it depends you see it's like everything you know there, there are low level and there are high level you know there are slow cars there are fast cars and like in the world of cassettes if you you know bought the house brand curry's cheapest plastic one and the cheapest cassettes you'd buy by the counter at tesco with a pack of 10 you're not going to get the same quality as you would if you say bought a metal uh position cassette and like a really expensive cassette deck it's it's all how much money you would spend on it Cassettes can sound fantastic, but they can also sound poor. But that's the case today, whether you're listening through an amazing uh, big hi-fi system to your streaming or you've got that Bluetooth speaker you bought for three ninety nine online. It, it all depends how much money you spend on it. Uh -huh. So, but often, uh, you, you know, you could buy, you could spend more on your blank cassette and make that choice. But often the quality of, of the cassette recorded on by an artist is is, dict is predetermined, predictated, um, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is certainly in the duplication plants. So, again, it, it all depends on the cassette deck that you're playing it back on. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that cassettes are the ultimate fidelity. They never were. But... 
Again, today, they've transcended being an audio format and turned more into a sort of tangible link to the past stroke, new exciting trinket for people who don't remember them first time round. Well, and also with my cynical hat on, um, one one which rarely comes off, actually, I have mm-hmm. um, a feeling that artists like Harry Styles, uh, possibly in a in a business sense, and and all credit to the guy. Um, as as if you look on his shopping page, he has. Um, or he probably knows that his devoted fans are going to want everything there is to do with him in their collections. So naturally, just by huge fan base alone and his appeal, he's going to sell cassettes promote them and and then we see ourselves talking about stories like this oh absolutely i mean you know anything in human endeavor where some things starting to make money people are going to follow that's just the way that we are yeah so yeah there is a bit of bandwagon jumping thank you Uh, tony villa runs a youtube channel dedicated to cassettes Uh, also cassettecomeback.com uh, just gone a quarter to five. Now, you'll never guess what's making a comeback now. Uh, do you remember the Faf, your favourite album on cassette? And to save the batteries, having to use a pencil to rewind it when the tape got a bit loose. Then the tapes would get mangled up, wouldn't they? And chewed up your copy of Now 36, or whatever it was in those days. So... Here's something you thought would never happen. The cassette is making a comeback. Sales are at their highest now since 2003, with artists such as Harry Styles even putting out their latest music on tape. Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel dedicated to cassettes. Tony, hello there. Good afternoon, Andy. We've had a vinyl revival. Why are we seeing a return to cassettes now, then? Because the vinyl revival turned out to be very successful and profitable, so... uh it's a trickle-down economics type of thing. But do people still have cassette recorders? Because, oh, that's great, I can go out and buy a Harry Styles cassette. What do I play it on? Well, you can still get brand-new cassette recorders, albeit they're not of the greatest quality, but the the cassette itself, I think, has sort of transcended being a an audio device and into something that's uh, symbolic of the 1980s, symbolic of a lot of people's youth, it's trendy, you see it in Stranger Things, you see it in Guardians of the Galaxy, and we've got a generation of young people that now seeing them crop up and going, oh, it, it's real, I, I can actually buy one of these, and they'll buy that, maybe a, a cheap player off one of the websites, and it's like, wow, it, it's not only nice to look at with its mad-coloured shell and the inlay, which sometimes is signed, but it actually makes music as well, and all for a few quid. Are young people going to tolerate this? Because, I mean, you know, stuff I used to have to put up with, you know, if you wanted to listen to a particular track on an album, you had to keep fast-forwarding, rewind, missed it, just to try and get to it, whereas now you can just ask a smart speaker to play it like that. Are they going to put up with all of that? Well, apparently, yes, because last year 5.5 million records were sold, and they're more of a fast. You've got to take them out. You've got to make sure they're cleaned, anti-static, make sure your stylus is nice and clean, which wears out. And, yeah, I mean, nothing worthwhile was ever easy, Andy. Once you've gone through all the hassle, you can truly enjoy it. So um, who's buying them then? You mentioned young people, but is there quite a wide appeal? Well, I think it it is. I mean, you've got to think for older people, there could be a sense of nostalgia, but I think a lot of older people will remember them like a lot do say, oh, they sounded rubbish and they got eaten up. But um, I think a lot of it is fueled, like the Vinyl Revival, by independent music artists who aren't making any money on streaming platforms, but they have fans and they put a cassette up or a record up. They'll say, oh, we'll sign it, and you also get a download of the tune as well, and it's you know, a few quid and people are thinking, well, I can support them this way. And I've also got something that's really nice that'll look maybe nice on the office desk and people go, oh, a cassette or something actually on the shelves at home. And people like to collect things. You know, a lot of uh, people I know are into something called Synthwave, which is brand new music that sounds like it came out in 1986. And they religiously collect all the different brightly colored cassettes from all the different artists. So what I mentioned Harry Styles, which other artists are putting music out on cassette at the moment? Well, last year, Arctic Monkeys had the biggest selling cassette of them all. I mean, 100,000 copies of that. You've got Florence and the Machine putting it out. You've got um, Muse put them out. You know, the big labels, I know it's, it's a trend thing. You know, if there's money there and it's trendy, why not? 
but most of the big artists now are starting to put stuff out on cassette and you're even getting re-releases i bought metallica's garage days on a cassette out of hmv recently it's like what you know it it, it is trendy uh but it, it's also intrinsic we we like tangible things we like to be able to touch and look at things which is something that digital music just can't do Tony, tell us about your YouTube channel then that we can learn more about cassettes on. Well, it is. I mean, it, it'll be slightly boring for most people. Well, basically, cassettes do have a bad rap about bad audio quality. And what I've done is I've, I've bought decks that I could never afford when I was young, but I can afford now some of the best decks ever made. And I go through different types of cassettes, how to record them properly, and then audibly demonstrate how a cassette recorded well in a good deck can sound phenomenal brilliant tony thank you very much indeed very interesting thanks for your time tony villa there runs a youtube channel dedicated to cassettes making a comeback i wonder if you can get zara larson on cassette you might be able to because they're making a comeback now you know have a listen oh blimey that's bringing back the memories isn't it and then then of course the cassette tape gets jammed up doesn't it and you have to get a pencil out and just make sure it's all tight and all able to be played again uh, do you remember having a cassette player or buying your music on cassette or recording off the radio because it seems cassettes are making a comeback we talked about the the revival of vinyl but what about cassettes uh, tony villa runs a youtube channel that's dedicated to cassettes and joins me on the program now tony good afternoon Good afternoon, Melvin. So cassettes still, you know, popular now. They're making a bit of a comeback. I mean, why? 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 Is, what's caused this? It's it's sort of a trickle down from the vinyl comeback, which we've been seeing over the last few years. I mean, ultimately, we've got a lot of young people that have lived through digital, through so streaming and iTunes and stuff that. After a while, as humans, you know, what is new and whiz-bang becomes boring and ordinary, and we look for something else. So we started having people cherishing vinyl and loving the actual covers and putting them on walls as pictures, etc. The trickle-down effect is that now, thanks to the likes of Stranger Things and Guardians of the Galaxy using cassettes, the cassette is sort of coming back, and it's transcending being an audio format and more into like a little trendy retro sort of trinket and keepsake uh, cassettes tended to be a little bit hissy sound wise are they better these days no to be fair um the modern cassette tape that is being made is not as good as it was in the heyday due to the fact that most of the main manufacturers you know your tdk's max cells etc haven't made new tape for quite a long time decades so no, I mean, people aren't buying modern cassettes for the intrinsic sound quality. It's, uh, for example, say you've got an independent artist, and they don't make money on streaming services, really. Only the biggest of the big do. But you love them, and they have a cassette up for sale for a few pounds, and they'll sign it for you. You spend your few pounds, you've got something that's iconic, something that's retro, and it looks good on your shelf for a few quid. Why not? And, and artists are actually releasing material on cassette now. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, last year, you know, you had the likes of uh, the 1975 and Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys sold something like 100,000 cassettes. Uh, again, it could just be a bandwagon jump or the trickle down from from the spike in vinyl sales, which, you know, has been going on for a few years. But yes, um, they're trendy. That's um, the best way to put it at the moment. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Thanks ever so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Tony Villa, who runs a YouTube channel dedicated to cassettes, uh, talking all about the, uh, the the sort of revival of the cassette. I hear something uh, I bet you never thought would be making a comeback. I certainly didn't. The cassette tape. I know. Sales are now at their highest since 2003, 20-year high, uh, with massive artists like Harry Styles and Florence and the Machine putting out their latest music on tape. Who'd have thought it? Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel that's dedicated to cassettes and also runs CassetteComeback.com. Tony, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Becky. So what's this all about? Well, it's kind of human nature, Becky, you know, what's whiz-bang and new and shiny, like streaming, becomes ordinary, becomes boring, then people look for something else. We've seen a big rise in vinyl over the last few years, mm. and naturally the knock-on effect is now we're seeing a rise in cassettes. 
But you see, vinyl to me is something to treasure. You know, it's the look of it, it's the feel of it, it's the sleeve. The cassette was just a pain, wasn't it? I mean, they used to snap and all go wrong. <laughs> it was just like, oh, I don't know what it is about it. It's just not great. Well, that's the thing, Becky. See, the cassettes transcended being something to listen to music on. If you look at the amount of T-shirts and phone cases that have cassettes on them, you've got mm. the likes of Stranger Things sending Kate Bush to the top of the charts again. And a new generation of youngsters who never used them first time round are seeing this. And more importantly, it's more for independent artists that they love. And for a few quid, they can get a nice little keepsake that looks cool, they can put it on the shelf, sometimes they're signed, and they can help support their independent artists by buying a cassette. Well, no, that's a lovely thing to do, and I completely get that. But you said they buy it and put it on the shelf. Do they not... Has anyone got a cassette player anymore? Well, that's the thing, you see. I mean, there are still brand new cassette players, but if you went and bought yourself a brand new Walkman, it wouldn't be as good as the cheapest, you know, home brand Curry's Walkman that you could have bought in the 90s for 9 99 So, again, it's, it's not about the audio quality. It's about having a tangible little bit of memorabilia that looks nice, is iconic, and is appealing for a few quid. Did you keep yours? Uh, no, there was a point in the early 2000s where I'd gone over to CDs and I went, <laughs> when am I going to listen to these again? But <laughs> that's the other side. A lot of us that remember the first time round get very nostalgic because they were the soundtrack to our youth. Yeah, I know. I do actually have a couple left, but they were ones that I'd recorded special... You know, I'd, I'd done tapes, mixed tapes yeah. on them, and I've kind of, I don't know why, but I've kept them somewhere or other. It's a very, very strange thing. So, Tony, do you think it's going to just carry on going? You know, cassettes are going to become more and more popular. Well, let's, let's take it into context. You know, yes, it has been a massive rise in sales to like 195,000 last year. But let's put that in context of vinyl being 5.5 million and CDs being 11.6 million. It's a little niche item that it's nice that they're coming back and people are enjoying them. But I don't believe that without massive investment in new tapes and new tape decks, it will ever be anything more than just you know, a little trinket, something nice, something cool, a bit trendy, but I can't see as ever, you know, going back into HMV and seeing racks upon racks of cassettes there. It's good to talk to you, Tony. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Tony runs CassetteComeback.com. Have you got any of yours left? If you have, let me know. And what's on? No, does this bring back memories? Yeah, bad ones. That was a common problem before digital music and CDs. Cassettes getting chewed up. Then we'd have to use a pencil to fix them. Well, cassettes, surprisingly, are making a comeback. Sales are rising and are at the highest level since 2003, with massive artists like Robbie Williams, Harry Styles and Florence and the Machine even putting out their latest music on tape. Well, Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel that's dedicated to cassettes. Hi, Tony. Good afternoon, Barry. You're obviously a fan. I obviously am not. <laughs> Tell us why you like cassettes. Well, I think the the reason that people are liking cassettes currently, it falls into one of two categories. One, you've got the likes of Stranger Things making Kate Bush number one that has cassettes in it. And you've got a new generation of young people that just see cassettes on phone cases and T-shirts. But now they realise it's something real and tangible that they can purchase. It's something new to them, so they're curious. And then on the other side, you have old geezers like me that are just nostalgic. Yeah, I mean, they have an excuse because they don't know all the problems that come with cassettes, but you do. Yes, but you see, this is the thing. A cassette deck, a good one at least, it's a machine, it's mechanical. You wouldn't get your car never service it and then complain that it breaks. A cassette deck needs to be looked after. It takes time. You've got to clean it. And if you clean and look after your cassette deck, it will not snag your tape up. So you have tape snagged up. I'll show you somebody that never cleaned the cassette deck. 
<laughs> Never even thought about that. How do you clean a cassette deck? At the time, you could buy you could buy it in your hi fi shops. You could buy cleaning tape. Yeah, I remember cassette, those. It had little brushes on it. Yeah, you put a little bit of alcohol on it, and it cleaned this little rubber part called the roller, which dragged the cassette over time cassette would build up on it, and it, it, especially in cars where it was warm, it would get sticky, it would stick to the cassette and it would rip the cassette out. But if you put that cassette in every month or so, it would clean it and you'd never get a cassette snag up. Nowadays, you just use a cotton wool bud with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, give it a clean, and you'll never have a cassette chewed up. Actually, our family has a car that still has a cassette deck in it. <laughs> the really, I'm, I'm glad more artists are now making music on cassette because we are subjected to the one band because we have one cassette and it, it's Run Rig. <laughs> oh my goodness. Run Rig, oh. Oh, I love Run Rig. Alba, what a song that is. Anyway, yeah, that's a different topic. They're very good, but, <laughs> but the yeah. same one all the time is a, a bit of a stretch. But um, it's interesting, isn't it, that all these big names are now turning to cassette? Well, it, it's a bandwagon jump, if we're being honest. I mean, let's take a bit of context. You know, the cassette sales in 2022 in the UK were around 195,000. That's a lot compared to the 3.8 thousand they were in 2012. That's a big rise. But that's nothing compared to the 5.5 million records that were sold in 2022 and the 11.6 million CDs that were sold. So it's still very niche and a 1% product, if you will. But it is nice. But again... The rise of cassettes is due to the major labels because when CDs came, everyone moved away from records, but the record plants a lot shut down, but kept going because independent artists kept them going because they would get their records pressed there. But now that streaming services are showing that the only people that really make money from streaming services are the streaming services and the biggest of the big, record companies are going, ah, vinyl come back, let's make records. So they're flooding record presses, presses the few that are left. And so the independent artist again is like, right, I can't get records pressed anymore. Um, cassettes, let's try cassettes. So now they're going to the cassette pressing plants to get cassettes made relatively cheaply and fast. Okay. And now the majors are coming on that. The independents are the pioneers in this, ladies. Tony, lovely to speak to you. Thanks very much. Tony Villa. Despacito on Radio Sheffield. Can I get a rewind? So the Humble Cassette is making a comeback. Sales are now at their highest since 2003, with massive artists like Harry Styles, Florence and the Machine all put all put in their new um, music on the tape. But what is the reason for this revival? Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel that is dedicated to cassettes called Cassettes Comebacks and is on the line now. Evening, Tony. Good evening, Sile. How you doing? I'm very well. How are you? I'm all right. I'm excited to find out why cassettes are making a comeback. Right. Well, there's sort of two angles as to why they're making a comeback. I mean, firstly, it's because they're trendy. We've mm. got... You know, I've been listening to the music and everything, and I absorb a lot of new music, and there's a very 80s influence in a lot of music lately, a lot of synthesizer. And then you have the likes of Stranger Things taking Kate Bush to the back of the charts, and, and they're using cassettes. Cassettes are in there. Cassettes are on T-shirts, on bags, or on phone cases. And we've got a generation of young people that have never had the joy of physical, tangible media with inserts you can take out and read the lyrics, or if you buy from an independent artist, maybe they've signed it. And it's an actual physical item that also happens to play music and comes in crazy colours nowadays, and it's, it's collectible. And we've got young people saying, wow, this is awesome, for a few quid I can help an independent artist, or I can actually have something tangible from an artist that I love that I can put on my shelf and look at. And then we've got the old people like me who are just nostalgic. That's true. Do you remember? Let's go back. Let me take it all the way back. Do you remember when you, you know, had cassettes and you got your first one? Yes, I do. I do remember that very, very well, actually, because from a very young age, in the early 80s, uh, every Sunday, religiously, I'd, I'd be there recording the top 40, all the greatest songs. And I remember asking my mum, to buy me some cassettes so I could record the tunes I liked off the top 40, which is piracy and uh, the police will be coming <laughs> around any moment. But uh, yeah, that, that's the first cassette I remember ever getting was, was a blank one, if you know what I mean, to record the, the tunes. And from then on, that, that's, that was my music in the 80s up to like the late 90s. That's how I absorbed it. 
Yeah, I'm guessing back then, you know, the hardware to play the cassettes were prominent. But nowadays, because, you know, as it went down, the hardware to play the cassettes was not there anymore. So what are, when people buy the cassettes, do they have to buy the hardware to play it too? Well, that's the thing. Modern hardware is unfortunately very poor quality now. So mm. that is why I think in the two different fields that we have of people buying cassettes is we have the young people who see it more as a novelty, a cool little item, trinket, that can also play music. Mm. That looks cool, but it can make music. But the modern hardware, to be fair, isn't really up to scratch. And then we have people like myself who are buying, you know, the old expensive top of the range stuff that we could never afford when we were young and actually discovering that cassettes on a really good deck can sound absolutely fantastic. Mm. That is true. And, you know, I'm just thinking back to when my dad used to have them. And, you know, we loved them, but they did have their problems, didn't they? You know, the tape getting chewed up and the player, um, uh, all those types of nostalgic things. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I've, I've said this to a few people. You show me somebody that had tapes chewed up, I'll show you somebody that never cleaned the cassette deck because <laughs> it, it's mechanical, you know, it's got moving parts and... You needed to get one of them little cassette cleaners that you could get in the shops, put a bit of the fluid on, run that through your cassette deck every month for a couple of minutes, and it would never chew a cassette up. But if you just left it, yeah, it would chew a cassette up. Oh, that's a very good remedy, that. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you wouldn't get your car and never clean it, never maintain it, and then complain that the car breaks down. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. Do you see this trend increasing then? Do you see the sales going up over the next couple of years? Uh, personally, no. Um, at the end of the day, yes, the sales have gone up to like 195,000 in 2022, but that still pays in, to con in significance compared to 11 million CDs. Mm. You know what I mean? It is a big rise for cassette, but in the grand scheme of things, I don't think there's enough sales there that will incentivize any large companies to make some new fantastic cassette decks or to make some new fantastic tape. I mean, the new tape being made is not as good as the ones that you used to buy in a 10-pack by the till in Tesco back in the day. The tape isn't as good as those. And the new decks, like I say, they won't come because I don't think the demand is there. But while it's there, enjoy it. Mm. Who knows? Never say never. And that's true. You have a YouTube channel, you know, called Cassettes Comebacks. Um, what do we, what can we watch on your channel? Well, basically, it's back to the old people and you know people i mean people say oh yeah they were hissy they sounded rubbish and all that and that was my thoughts as well i had lower end equipment and i just used to use what we had because i wasn't buying it myself i was young but now i've got really good decks and i've learned about how to make a really good recording it's like you you have to work at it and my channel i go through how you can make fantastic recordings and i also go through all the different types of cassettes that were available and how you can make them sound so good and what techniques you can use and what sort of equipment you need in order, if you're that bored like me, to be able to make fantastic cassette recordings in this day and age. Now, uh, what is one of your favourite tracks to listen to on the cassette? You know, it, it, it's got to be, I, I just remember this day vividly, it was the first day that I'd had the new cassette that put into my first car. My friend Nathan and I we were going to Southport First track on that tape, Jump Van Halen. Nothing says 80s like Jump Van Halen, even though this was the mid-90s when we did this. But yeah, I mean, that is a track that always reminds me of cassette whenever I hear it. You know just, what? You know what, Tony? Hold on a minute. I thought I'd play it for you to say thank you for being on and telling us about why, you know, cassettes are making a comeback. Hey, absolutely fantastic to see you. I love being on here. Brilliant. That was Tony Villa there, who runs Cassettes Comeback YouTube channel. And he was talking to us about the rise of sales in cassettes. And so let's have a listen to one of Tony's favourite songs to listen to on this. Hall and Oates, Private Eyes on BBC Radio Shropshire. Now here's something I bet you never thought would make a comeback. The cassette tape. Do you remember all the faff, your tape player chewing up your favourite tunes and then having to get a pencil to roll it all back in? I remember having cut it up and sellotaping it back together. 
Um, there's something, though, quite magical about the world where everything is digital. A bit like how vinyl has seen a revival. Well, the cassette is too. Sales are at the highest since 2003, and Tony Villa runs a YouTube channel that's dedicated to cassettes and joins us now. Hello. Good afternoon, Claire. What is your obsession with uh, with cassettes all about then, Tony? Why? Well, it, personally, it's because I'm quite a bored man, and if I was a Ferrari <laughs> test driver, I wouldn't really be bothered. But the point is, I look back at cassettes, and they remind me of a point in time of my life, because, you know, I was born in the 70s, my 80s was recording cassettes, and, you know, it's, it's a lot of nostalgia for me personally as to why I like cassettes, but... We have a new generation that have grown up with purely digital, nothing tangible. They don't see the artwork. Or we've seen cassettes in things like Stranger Things and Guardians of the Galaxy. And they see them on T-shirts and on phone cases. And then all of a sudden, artists say, love, are releasing cassettes. And they're like, oh, wow, yeah. they're actually real. How nice. Have you rediscovered your love of cassettes or is it something you've just continued throughout your life? Well, it's it's much to, to the chagrin of some of my YouTubers. I say in the early noughties, I binned all of my cassettes saying, <gasps> when am I ever going to use these again? And then slowly as life went on, you just, I don't know, it's strange nostalgia to hold one and open it. And when you record one, you're not recording one now. You're recording one when you were young. You're taping the top 40 off the radio. It's, it's a strange nostalgic charm to them. See, I do, I do get that to a certain degree because I have a huge box of old cassettes. Some of them are actually, you know, albums of, of artists, but a lot of them are ones that I've made myself. Uh, you know, got one album on one side, one album on another. I've got nothing to play them on, but I tell you what, I can't bring myself to get rid of them. That's it. It's tangibility. You know, as humans, we like nice things. We like to hold things and look at things. And, you know, modern music distribution now is you don't hold a look at anything. You don't see anything like that. And again, things can become attached to you. And that's why you can't throw it away, because it, it's a snapshot of you when you were younger. Are you playing them on a regular basis? What have you got to play them on? Well, that's the thing, you see, doing what I do, I have to, you know, put your money where your mouth is. So I have <laughs> some of the best decks ever made. And honestly, uh, back in the day, I didn't have them. But now the, the best that the 80s and 90s had to offer in cassette decks, do it right on a good tape. It's mind blowing how good they can sound. But really? that's the case with anything. The more, uh, the more you spend, the better it is. True. And have you ever had um, a chewing up episode recently? No, because you see, this is the thing, I'll say very succinctly, um, they're a mechanical object with moving parts, they need maintenance, they need cleaning, just like your car needs maintaining. If you had cassettes being chewed up, I'm guessing you never ever cleaned your cassette deck. Mm, maybe. I can't remember, yes. to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite one at the minute, Tony? Well, you know, I've liked Arctic Monkeys for a long time and Arctic Monkeys, like I say, they had the best-selling cassette of last year and when it came out, it's like, good, the big boys are getting there. So, Brilliant. yeah, absolutely. Put your money where your mouth is and, and just play forward. Thank you very much. Lovely to talk to you. That's Tony Villa, who runs a YouTube channel dedicated to cassettes. That was the Leave Late Minute Breakfast 2023 actual mixtape. I love Jack. Some great suggestions. I really, really want to do the gag no, to follow off his playoff. Don't do the gag. But this will be the last Lee Blakeman at breakfast ever, and there definitely won't be a 2024 mixtape <laughs> if I do said gag. So I'm just going to speak for the next couple of minutes instead to Tony Villa, who runs the Cassette Comeback YouTube channel. Tony, help me out. How are you, mate? Good morning. Good morning, Lee. I, I think I know what your joke is going to be. And <laughs> I could get away with it Don't, because no. I'll probably never be on here again anyway. <laughs> Let's move swiftly on and tell me why cassettes, <laughs> why cassettes are making a comeback. Why are they popular, mate? They're iconic, fella. You've just played something there. People's memories are encapsulated in cassettes. If you're a certain age, they were how you listened to your music. They were the first, you know, media that allowed us to listen to what we wanted when we wanted. So when they accompanied the lives but you have, to, of us. you have to take them with you, though, now, don't you, where you can just download it onto a phone. But we, we were saying yesterday that we, we've seen it with vinyl, haven't we, over the last decade or so. Oh, yeah. 
is it down to the same reason people just want something physical to be able to hold rather than just some invisible piece of audio that's it you know we're humans we like to collect things we're hunter gatherers and where music you know excites one sense your sense of hearing Physical media also excites the sense of sight and it mm. also excites the sense of touch. We like nice things, tangible things, pretty things. And a lot of people who aren't nostalgic, i.e. young people, you know, we're in a, a time where the 80s is cool. The cassette is an icon of the 80s and it's like, wow, we can actually buy these with music I like on. What got me yesterday when I heard about the cassette making this comeback in 2023, right, is a complete and utter nerd who will moan about the sound of a microphone all the time to our engineer when you're talking about the quality of it what's the quality of a cassette like now because i associate them with being a little bit bitty it's it's like everything lee if you want to go and get yourself a ten thousand pound hi-fi plug your phone into it <laughs> stream it's going to sound amazing mm. you're going to listen to a 399 bluetooth speaker you got off the internet going to sound rubbish the same with cassettes you get back what you put in especially financially but Cassettes can sound astounding, but, you know, a lot of people's memories is very, you know, it shows their imperfections, but imperfections cause character, and that's what I like to say. So you're saying if people are being boring and sceptical and just going, no, I'm just going to download the latest Harry Styles song, embrace the cassette, mate, basically. Go out and buy one. Why not? No, go out and buy one if you want one. I won't sit here and tell you it's the ultimate fidelity in the best way because <laughs> I stream most of my music still. Oh, because it is, con it is. It is convenience. Let's be honest here. We've swapped magic for convenience in modern life, but cassettes, records, there's still a little bit of magic in there, and that's what brings people back. He loves cassettes, but he loves his digital because he's own, also got his own cassette YouTube channel, which is called Tone. Cassette comeback. Cassette comeback. Mate, thank you ever so much for coming on, and a really big thank you for not doing the obvious gag at the start. Thank you very much. Right, so this man won't be the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Top man, have a great day. See you later, Lee. Take care. Cheers, Tony. That's Tony Villa, cassette enthusiast. Cassette, I can never say that word. Cassette enthusiast who runs the Cassette Comeback YouTube channel, talking to us all about the Lee Blakeman at Breakfast 2023 mixtape, which you helped us compile yesterday. What a top man he is. Now here's something I bet you never thought would be making a comeback. The cassette tape. Do you remember the faff? When the tape player was chewing up your favourite tunes, having to use a pencil to rewind it. As it's 2023 now, everything is digital, whether you like it or not. However, the bit is a, there is a bit of a revival when it comes to vinyl and cassette is also following suit. Sales are now at their highest this year with a massive artist like Harry Styles, Florence the Machine, even putting out their latest music on tape. Someone who can help shine a light on that is Tony Villa, who runs a YouTube channel that's dedicated to cassettes. Tony, thanks for joining us. Afternoon, Jericho. Tell me, the revival of cassettes, has this been a long time coming? Um... I don't know. It, it's it's sort of, if you think of human beings, yeah, whatever is whiz-banging new and fantastic like streaming when it first came out, I was like, <gasps> and I'd already binned all my cassettes. After a while, it becomes ordinary, it becomes boring, and people look for something new. And we've seen a big rise in record sales over the past few years, and naturally that seems to be trickling down to the other formats, i.e. cassettes. It seems to be uh, coming off the back of that. Whatever next, it's going to be a gramophone next, you reckon? Oh, I'm sure there's wax cylinders <laughs> somewhere that are going to be pressed again. For you, Tony, what is it about the cassette and the, the, the having a tape? What's so special and magical about that? I think it's because, uh, you know, I'm obviously an older guy than you. Is, is I grew up with cassettes, you know, when I was making mixtapes, my friends were on cassettes. When I was listening to music that were cassettes, when I was taping the top 40 on a Sunday illegally, it was on cassettes. Uh, they're a big part of my youth that... Uh, you know, I, I threw away when I went into digital in the early 2000s and then one day stumbled across an old deck in the cassette and the part of my head that had been closed for a long time suddenly opened and waves of nostalgia sort of flushed over me and it became more about enjoying the whole experience as opposed to just listening to music. Do you think there is that romantic element, Tony, still where you can make a tape and give it to your crush or to one of your friends to listen to in the car? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, look at it this way. If you... 
you know, because shows like Stranger Things and Guardians of the Galaxy have made it trendy and put it in the eyes of young people again. If you wanted to impress somebody, what would be more impressive that you give them a handwritten, decorated cassette with songs on that maybe even they can't play or you share them a Spotify playlist? Yeah, it doesn't have the same you ring know, to it, does it, it? It doesn't. Nothing worthwhile is ever easy. Absolutely. How many cassettes do you own then, Tony? You said you'd, you'd slung quite a lot away back in the day, but have you managed to build up a, be- a bigger collection? Yes, I, I have several thousand and <laughs> still managed to keep hold of my wife. So, yeah, it can't be all bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. What's your favourite? If, you, if if there was a, the fire was... Uh, so the house was on fire, right? As this old, old, old it, um, scenario. The wife's out. Everybody else is fine. You can only get one tape. What are you grabbing? I'm grabbing a tape that I didn't throw away first time round, and this might be mind-blowing to some people, but the tape is the game Ghostbusters for the Commodore 64, which we loaded from cassettes in them days, and that's my original one from all that time ago. I've still got it still boxed, and that's what I'd be grabbing. Wow. Is that because it has a sentimental value, or is it worth a pretty penny? It's because I still remember vividly Christmas Day 1984 where I had to get told to go to bed and turn off that damn computer because of that game. Tony, thank you so much for talking to us and giving us an insight on cassettes. If people want to have a look at your stuff that you do on YouTube, where do they find you and how do they find you? Just go onto YouTube and look for Cassette Comeback. Cassette Comeback, sounds good to me. I'm to be quite bored. <laughs> Tony, I haven't been bored. Thank you so much for joining us on BBC Radio. Such a pleasure, thank you.